All right, what's up, YouTube? This is a special video release. I'm Lord Zath, and I'm wearing my uh, Fabletics Men coaching clothing because people say I look like a football coach in this outfit. And I'm joined by First Day Admiral and I Duckman. Go ahead and say hello, hi if you like. There you go. Sorry. Um, but First Day Admiral. Well, yes, you too. Go ahead. <laughs> That, yeah. and there's I Duckman, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the, the impetus for this video and the reason I'm recording it is because First Day Admiral said, Hey, Zaf, can you explain how to use the armor viewer? And I thought to myself, I could explain it to him, but I could also put it on YouTube and put it out there and help however many other players out there. So um, that's the impetus for this video. Um, and I'm also doing this for him because he's been a, a big supporter of my channel and all that. So this is my way of kind of saying thanks to him as well. So. Thank you, First Day Admiral. Thanks, man. So I do appreciate it. No problem. You're welcome. So let's talk about the armor viewer, and let's get away from Tier 2 for a bit here. Let's start off with... <laughs> let's, I don't have any armor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let, let's start off with a, with a ship that a lot of people are familiar with, the Des Moines, the Tier 10. Um, why did you ask me about the armor viewer? What are you trying to figure out for yourself, first of all? Well... A little history. I'm actually um, a disabled vet, and I have TBI. Um, and so with TBI, it's traumatic brain injury. And so, like, things, for instance, like the numbers, when, when you start, for me, what I, issues and what I deal with is when you start dealing with a lot of numbers, graphs, bars, it starts getting jumbled, kind of like someone with dyslexia. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just, it gets, it gets, you know, I, I need someone to kind of walk me through those kind of okay. things. And if I can ask the questions, it, it, it goes from origami to kind of just read in plain English. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Do you have a pen and paper um, handy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. I'm, uh, I'm completely ready. We're going to start by having, I'm going to start by having you write down some numbers. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The first number to write down is 14.3. Okay, and next to that, write down AP for armor piercing uh, overmatch. Okay. That's an important number. I'll explain why in a little bit. The second number to write down is six. And that's going to be HE penetration. Okay. Now, those are two general rules. Uh, AP overmatch never really changes. Uh, in the game. However, uh, when it comes to HE, there are some cases where it's uh, overmatch of, of, of five or six, or sorry, four. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's first take a look at our ship out at our Des Moines here, and let's go into the armor layout. So when you go into the armor layout, you can see all these fun colors and shades. Personally, I never even bother looking at the shades. I just use my mouse and hold the mouse over places, okay? And what I'm typically trying to do with the armor viewer, if I'm using high explosive, let's start with high explosive because that's the easier one to understand. If I'm thinking about high explosive, then what I want to do is I want to figure out, do I need IFHE, inertia fuse for high uh, explosive shells, okay? IFHE increases the penetration of your HE shells. By default, you you have a certain level, and then IFHE just adds, I believe it's 25% additional, or is it 20%? I can't remember off the top of my head. But notice how the, the uh, Des Moines has a four-end deck armor of 27 millimeter. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I recently played the Smolensk. And I'm going to take oven chicken for a second, and I'm going to go ahead and send it to the reserve. Okay. Now, the reason I did that is because this ship has 130 millimeter guns. Now, 130 divided by six is 22. Remember I told you to write down six? So for HE, you typically divide by six. The nice thing is in port, if you just hold the mouse over the battery, uh, the main battery there, it will tell you what your shell armor penetration capacity is right there so it's 22 millimeters you see that got it now 22 millimeters is less than the des moines which is 27 
What that means is you will not be able to penetrate the Des Moines bow or stern armor with a, Smolen with a Smolensk gun HE fired at it. It only penetrates 22 millimeters. Let's go back to the Des Moines for a second and go back to the armor layout. 22, will not pen, 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 will pen, will not pen. So the only thing that you can penetrate with Smolensk HE is the superstructure armor. Oof. That's not a lot of ship, is it? At all. Okay. Now, especially on the move. <laughs> yes, especially on the move and especially considering the fact that as as parts of the ship take more damage, they get dirtier and darker in game, right? They display darker. And that basically is saying that they are become saturated. And saturation means that less and less of the hit points in this particular part of the ship remain, which means every time you hit this area, you get reduced returns, diminished returns on your HE penetration. So not only are you only penetrating a small part of ship armor, you're also doing less and less damage to the ship overall. And you're praying for fires. And you're exactly right. You're praying for fires, or you're praying that this guy comes up really close to you and sits broadside so you can penetrate him with AP shells. Right. That's the only thing that you're hoping for, right? Now, mm -hmm. let's go back to the Smolensk, and let's recall, just suck oven chicken back in the ship, and auto-magically, <laughs> he now penetrates 27 millimeters of armor. Guess what? Now, you can aim for the bow or stern sections of a Des Moines and you can penetrate that armor as well. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I like to use this uh, a lot for determining if I want IFHE on a ship or not. Um, a lot of times that comes into play with the Japanese gunboat destroyers. Like, say, Kitakaze is a great example of this. Um... Because if I take the Kitakaze, and let me blow away all these other ships and pick a battleship now. Alright, if I take a Kitakaze, right now, a Kitakaze penetrates 30 millimeters of armor. Now, let me see. I believe I have one commander that has IFHE and one that does not. Um, it's been a while since I've played, so I'm going to have to see if I can find it. I thought I did have... you get with too many commanders. Yeah, right? IFHE's not on this one. Um... Let's see. No, I can't do that. Okay. I know I have multiple commanders for this uh for 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 the kitakaze specifically because i i was experimenting <sighs> i apologize guys no it's okay this is actually quite amusing yeah yeah uh this this is this is zath level problems ladies and gentlemen <laughs> when you when you just you can't freaking find the commander that you know you have someplace let me, let me try this again. Gumo. I'm just looking at the, all the 19s, 20s. Well. Um, all, the, uh, all the commanders that are trained on this ship should appear at the top of the list. I would think so, but I could have sworn I had two Kitakaze commanders. <clears throat> uh, let's go back to tier 8. Let's go to the Akizuki then. Because I'm pretty sure I had two commanders for the Akizuki. At the same principle is true. 30 millimeter of pen. Now let's go ahead and add IFHE. You'll note up here it now pens 37 millimeters of armor. Now, Oof. if if you're playing a Kitakaze or an Akizuki or a Hargumo, then you think about who your biggest opponent's going to be. Is it going to be battleships? Is it going to be cruisers? Right. Uh, 30 millimeters means it will penetrate. Go back to Des Moines, it'll penetrate Des Moines no problem, right? IFHE is not necessary. As a matter of fact, it will penetrate Des Moines deck armor as well, without IFHE. And the armor belt. So, and so that's completely bad news. For, for the Des Moines, Moines, it's great news for me and the Akizuki, yeah. but it's bad news right. for the Des Moines. Exactly right. Um, 
The only thing it'll shatter on is going to be the Citadel armor belt and the side and top plating and frontal armor and the barbette armor for the turrets, right? And I guess the conning tower too. Um, so if I'm if my biggest opponent is the Du Bois, then I don't need to worry at all about um, IFHE. Where it gets interesting and difficult to choose from is... I'm going to find... Another problem when you have too many damn ships <laughs> trying to find <laughs> a specific <laughs> ship that you are looking for. Let's talk about that's the Conqueror. Zero with world Zap problem. Level problem. That's right. Zap level problems, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right. So Conqueror has 32 millimeters of armor all around, except for the armor belt, of course. If I want to penetrate the Conqueror's armor, I need IFHE because by default, 30 millimeters is not enough. Does that make sense? It does. So generally you speaking, also lose fire chance, correct? I was just going to mention that. Very good. Yes. Uh, you lose 50% of your fire chance by picking it. So you have to decide what's the more important trade off for you. Do you want to penetrate the armor or do you want a better chance of causing fires? Fires are 100% repairable. They, they last for a decent amount of time, and if you catch somebody with DCP off and their repair party unavailable, of course, you can burn them to a, to a crisp, right? But right. if the ship has well, the ability qualify to... That a little bit. Qualify that a little bit. Fires are repairable if your damage control party can keep up with them. Exactly. If you can outdistance the DCP, then they're fatal. Exactly, which is what I was just going to say. If this Conqueror gets down to 100 hit points and all of his all of his hit points, however many hit points he's got, 83,000 damage. If all of that uh, all of that hit points, but say one hit point was fire damage and Conqueror escapes, Conqueror can burn through all of their repair parties if they wanted to and, and fully reheal that ship back to full because fire is 100% repairable. Penetration, though, is not 100% repairable. Duckman, do you remember what it is? Hmm, what? Penetration. On the Conqueror? Uh, on any ship. How much is how much is a shell penetration Wait, repairable? No, it does vary, but it's roughly 50%. Right. So, if you do IFHE, you won't start as many fires, but the damage that you do to the ships is more is longer lasting, right? So, you have right. to decide what you're trying to do. If you just want to farm damage... Um, you know, HE might be the, uh, just, just fire spam might be the way to go. If you want to do more, uh, more lasting damage, then IFHE might be the choice for you. And that's a trade off. And that's something that I cannot tell you, the player, anybody who's listening and watching this video, I cannot simply say, this is the way, this is the better way to do it. You have to decide for yourself, which option you want to go with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, sure so that takes care of HE shells and IFHE. I don't think we need to talk anymore about IFHE. Now we come to the part that is more fun. And you can literally spend hours in this game playing around with the armor viewer. Let's take a look at the Smolensk. The Smolensk is no longer available for probably good reason. On the surface, you'll note 16 millimeter armor, 16 millimeter armor, and 70 on the side, which basically means just about anything is gonna penetrate this armor, correct? Right. Okay. Now, you're in a battleship. You're shooting the Smolensk directly from the side here. You shoot right into its citadel and you get Nothing but over penetrations. You don't get a citadel hit. And you're probably sitting there and swearing a few times to yourself. <laughs> it sounds to me uh, like you've lived this before. Yeah, oh yeah. So the reason for that happening, in, in the armor viewer, you can remove places, okay? And then you can basically strip away parts to get an idea of what the citadel looks like. The reason why you're not getting Citadel hits on the Smolensk is because if it's fully broadside to you, first of all, notice how low in the water, low on the water, the Citadel rests. Right. It's just barely oh, above yeah. the water. The second and more important part is look how narrow the ship is. 
If you are up close, and by close I mean like 10 kilometers away from the Smolensk, and a Smolensk is broadside to you and you shoot your AP at it, chances are your shells will hit this side and come out the other side and explode outside. That's an overpenetration. In other words, the shell did not arm in time and explode uh, while the shell was within the citadel. It exploded outside the ship. So it armed, but it was exited the ship before it could explode. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Tracking. So One little note. One little note. Mm. Uh, although you think that because it's punching holes in the ship, uh, overpenetrations don't cause flooding. That is correct. Thank you. Yes. So for a Smolensk, what you actually want to see is you want to see something like this because you'll penetrate the armor uh, and there's so much more space, the shell will blow up right inside of it. It's one of the reasons why the, uh, the British cruiser line is so famous for just blowing up. Let's take the Edinburgh here. And you can see how much wider that ship is. Shells come yeah. in, oh, yeah. they blow up, boom, done. Oh, wow. So you understand how you can use this to get an idea of what's happening to my shell. You can visualize what's going to happen to your shell after an engagement. If you want to go back and say, why the heck didn't I citadel the target, right? Mm. Okay, now, I, I, there we go. I was missing something. Um, now, some targets, some ships, have what we call a turtle back. The German cruisers are famous for this turtle back design. And you can see it right here. I guess I, I'm missing, uh, I'm missing one of the side pieces. It doesn't matter. Here's the Citadel. And do you see how there's that little bump in the Citadel there? It's, uh, it's kind of looks like a stop sign almost, right? There's a 45 degree mm -hmm. slope up. And then you've got the citadel roof and then a slope down. What that means is that a shell that's coming at it at, at really close range will most likely hit this, this armored deck slope and bounce upwards and outward. Or it'll once again overpen the citadel. But most likely it'll hit this and bounce upwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Remember I told you to write down 14.3? Yeah. All right. Do you have a calculator handy? I don't. Duckman, do you? Actually, I... hmm. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Please do me a favor and do 45 times 14.3. 58.5. Uh, 45 times 14.3? Mm-hmm. I think you multiply it by 1.43. Maybe I did. 58. 45 times 14.3. Whoa, 829? Wait a second. Let me double check. Nope, you should have 643.5. Yep. No, eight, uh, 829.4. Double check. 45 times 14.3. Oh. You did 58 point whatever times 14.3. Yeah, um, yeah, and this damn uh, GNT hasn't even hit bottom yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 14.3 is what we call the overmatch mechanic for AP shells. At 14.3, um, when, when an AP shell hits a sloped target or any target, it does what's called an auto-bounce check, okay? If the shell is larger than 14.3 times the thickness of the armor then it will it will overmatch it will literally skip the check and it will, it will go in anyways okay if it's less than that then it goes through the auto bounce check so i said 643.5 which means that you need to have guns that are larger than 643.5 millimeter to overmatch and penetrate that armor at close range from a flat there trajectory yet, yet. <laughs> um the largest guns in the game are 510 millimeter, right? The Shikishima. So as a result, any battleship shells that you fire at a Hindenburg that's broadside, if it hits that Citadel armored deck slope, it will literally just bounce right up. It'll overpen, bounce off the turtle back, and out it goes. Either the roof or that piece itself. Interestingly enough, 
because of that turtle back, because of that 45 degree angle, the Hindenburg is extremely uh, vulnerable to penetrations from an angle like this. In other words, if you are at medium to long range, say 15 kilometer out, and you've got a broadside Hindenburg in say a Montana, then your shells will land right about that 45 degree, uh, right on that, that spot there, almost perf uh, perfectly perpendicular to that angled piece. And if so, bad news bears. it's very bad news bears for the Hindenburg. That's correct. Now keep in mind, that shell has to go through there it is that shell has to go through the armored belt at 30 millimeter so it will do it will do an auto bonds check at 30 millimeter okay and then it will also go to the citadel and you can see there's even that little side plating it might hit too depending on that depending on the angle it's kind of a it's kind of wonky but it'll hit either way it'll hit 30 millimeter and then it will go into the citadel right and then so there's two checks there will the shell arm so the hindenburg is really good at catching citadels at long range front well, while it's broadside the other way the hindenburg is good at catching shells is bow on i just mentioned to deadliest idiot in the discord dude why did you why did you yolo charge a yamato because if you look that citadel thwartship right there 110 millimeters easily gets penetrated by an ap mm. shell that comes in that's a light uh transverse bulkhead yes now do you see how there's 27 millimeters of plating here oh yeah do me a favor 27 times 14.3 let me see <laughs> that looks like me again 14.3 equals 386.1 bingo so you need to have larger than 386 millimeters of ap goodness to overmatch this belt, either one of these. Which means a Palmer and can't, but a Montana can. 406s can, the Republic can as well. A lot of people forget about the Repub. Um, that's why you saw Repub very was very popular in season one of Clan Battles because Hindenburg was very popular. And if I remember right, the, the armor scheme had been changed. I, I don't remember the exact timing, but note that 40 millimeter belt right here. If that shell were to hit this belt, boink, most likely will bounce right off. So if you've got a Hindenburg uh, and you're charging a battleship, you don't necessarily want to be going straight at him like this, right? Because your shells will probably just completely miss. Well, they'll, they'll hit, but they'll ricochet, right? Uh, oh, no, sorry. If you're Hindenburg and you're charging a battleship like a, a Yamato or a Repub or an American battleship like a Montana, um, you don't want to be straight on because the shells will go right through your bow. That's what I meant to say. Sorry about that. Um, you almost want to provide a, a more of an angled because you want to try to, to get them to hit this 40 millimeter piece instead. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. Um, and ultimately, if you're up close and personal, like I said to Deadliest, you're better off going broadside and giving this the target while you happily fire your torpedoes at their face and laugh because he'll overmatch you, boink, boink, and you'll do da he'll do damage to you, right? He'll get he'll get pens and overpen damage to you, but, you know, you'll live because you won't this be Citadel. the same concept with German battleships because I thought I remembered watching a video wherever it was explaining that German battleships are weaker at longer distances because of their armor layout, but stronger, closer. Yep. Uh, does that sound right? Yep. So Tirpitz also has <laughs> a, um, a turtle. Does it have, it should have a turtle back. It has turtle back. Yeah. Hey, Putin. Uh, the thing about German battleships at range and Zath can show you this on all of them. Look at all that superstructure you have to go through, too. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of superstructure at range. Yes. The best bet is when they're turning, when you see that red. And yeah. you, that, that will, but I mean, even that, that shot's very difficult. Right, right. Um, you can see right here, there's that 240 millimeter armor belt. And then there's also that extra torpedo bulkhead back here. So a lot of times you'll get a shell that will pen and it'll explode, but it won't, it won't explode. It won't penetrate the Citadel torpedo bulkhead. Um, 
So that's when you when you fire at a broadside turpits at the waterline or something and get a whole ton of damage, you'll get like 12k damage, but they're all penetration and over penetration damage is not citadel, right? Mm -hmm. At range, like Putin was saying, uh, all this what the superstructure does is it acts to arm the shell before it can reach the the, the citadel. So that's why you'll rarely ever get citadels on a turpits or other German battleship at range if it's kind of broadsiding. And like Putin said, you want to aim for kind of like the front area up here, right, Putin? Yeah. I got a question. I mean, that's true for Hindenburg too, but yep, it's it's a lot easier to get the sits on a Hindenburg at range. Yep. Uh, do you, do you, but I mean, do you like, look at all that little wood. Like, you you need that one shell not to go where you aim to drop in to sit these things. Right. Do you think uh, a discussion of effective armor thickness is, uh, is, is fruitful at this point? Um, in, this, in other words, the, the, the actual performance of the armor at angle. Well, and that's where the Autobahns comes into play, right? Because, um, or are you no, talk... Not, not, not quite, even before that. Okay. I mean, even if, even if you're outside of the bounce angle, then at, 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 at an angle, the armor appears thicker, right? Because in in, in the uh, along the path of the travel of the shell, it is thicker at an angle, right? Straight on, it's it appears thinner to the shell, right? So let's say, um, and you guys can't see this, but I'm going to hold this up anyway for everybody else that that's watching the video. Let's say that this is a piece of armor, and it's 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 literally the thickness of this card. Now, it's, it's a certain thickness now, right? Um, but if I were to angle this, then that thickness increases, okay? By a certain amount of, it depends on the angle, obviously. And you, if you've done your, your triangle math and stuff like that, and, you know, Pythagorean yeah, or whatever, you can figure it out. Like yeah, carry the one. So, like, the, the idea is that if you angle your armor, it's, it is effectively stronger against the target. Um, so... Generally speaking, and we saw this, I think, on King of the Sea, <laughs> going back to the Des Moines, um, what we were able to see was a botched attempt by an Ohio to one-shot a Des Moines. Why? Because the Des Moines uh, was was showing a um, he was showing kind of a bow in uh, situation, but then um, actually he was more kind of like this, and then he turned hard. And by turning, he changed his angle. So from this to this. What that did was he essentially baited the battleship player to shoot into the Citadel armor belt. And because that belt is 152 millimeters, by turning the ship, he increased the thickness of that armor to the point where the shell could not bounce or could not penetrate. And instead, it bounced off of the armor plating. Um, I get GG. Again, that auto bounce check is really important because there's no way in hell that you are going to overmatch a 152 millimeter armor plate. Okay, uh, what that what that battleship player should have done instead is shot at the foreign plating because from an angle like this, if that if that player were to hit, let's say right here, this spot here, I'm going to drop the front. Look, Citadel. Ooh, that's a pretty good transverse bulkhead though in Des Moines. 130 yeah 127 yeah but still you get the idea and that's so we saw um we saw yamato uh what game was it it was ggwp versus star i think or something we saw yamato come through and uh just just one shot of almost full health des moines right through the bow right mm -hmm. what that des moines was doing was that des moines was reversing did not have the ability to maneuver much at all and therefore could not control where the Amato shells hit. And the Amato was able to also to control that. So boom, right into the bow, through the bow, into the Citadel, nothing but sits. Gone. And because of that, uh, that team moved on and uh, the, the, the Des Moines players team lost. Oof. Um, massive oof. Massive oof, indeed. Well, now... Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. J j just to be fairness, like, we say oof. Mm -hmm. If it's a legendary Des Moines, him going forward 
completely changes everything because he's getting the speed that much faster. The shells may not have a chance to get into the Citadel. So you got to be careful of that too. Mm -hmm. Because that's how Des Moines will minimize their damage, I guess would be the correct term. Angling and, and speed juking, which mm -hmm. is why you still see a lot of players running a legendary mod. Because getting your ship moving forward to maneuver to have it hit the thicker part, uh, it, you know, you're minimizing your damage. So you got to be wary of that with the, the Des Moines. Yep. Unlike the rest of the cruisers, with the exception of Minotaur, because it's got a built in get up and go. Right. Oh, Stevie's joining me. Uh, one hey. out of. Stevie. Oh my god, what, what did you do? Oh. It's pause like Oops, i don't know um anyways uh were you gonna say something admiral oh uh, just said meow oh okay <laughs> now uh montana i just want to mention this for a second montana noticed 32 millimeter armor on the bow and stern so ifhg uh akizuki kitakaze can penetrate with ag uh, you know, uh, HE spamming cruisers can penetrate with IFHE, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The thing that I wanted to show you guys about this is a lot of players don't understand, especially when you're kind of broadside, that the best way to take damage off of battleships is through AP shells into the bow or especially the stern of these ships. And that, that, that goes for just about any battleship. And the reason for that is because... If you're say in a in a, mon, a minotaur or something like that, you can shoot the the superstructure, and you'll probably get a whole bunch of overpens. Overpens are ten percent of your shell damage. You can shoot the armor belt, right here. And you'll probably penetrate that depending on your range or the deck depending on the range. It's a big, yeah. But see how small this area is, and just underneath that is four hundred and nine millimeters of nope. So. <laughs> What a lot of players don't think about or understand, and, and I, I fall victim to this myself too at times, is the bow and stern are only 32 millimeters, and they're thick, especially the stern. Look how thick that stern is. So yeah. if, if you can penetrate this, I actually almost uh, won a ranked battle in the, Ki uh, in the Kiev against a uh, uh, Massachusetts because I just started penetrating his rear with AP. Um, and there's literally nothing you can do about it. It's nice, it's round, it's relatively flat and large, and so it's very easy to hit and do penetration damage within this this area. And the same thing for the bow, too. So those are areas to think about as well. Unless they're black. If they're already black, now, if they're already black, then they are saturated, which means you'll get diminishing returns from that you'll still get the 10 percent overmatch mechanic which is which is fine um it depends on the ship that you're nothing, firing with yeah. right exactly quick question now yes so <clears throat> with the uh i actually saw another player ask this a little bit earlier today so like the british have excellent he is that just fire chance or is that penetration as well so Everything. British British battleships have a one quarter HE penetration rule. So British battleships, instead of penetrating one sixth their uh, caliber, they penetrate one fourth their caliber. So British the British mm -hmm. and the Germans. So King George V, one of my favorite HE spamming ships, three hundred and fifty six millimeter guns will penetrate eighty nine millimeters of armor. Now, just three... by exploding their way through it. There's no armor cap on it. What do you mean? Well, there's uh, the, 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 the high density AP cap. So it's like the explosion itself oh. blows, its, it blows its way through the armor. Right, yeah. You, you could, however you want to explain it, 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 you know, I always just say it's, it's magic extra pen, but yeah, I mean. Magic is fine. It's fine. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> so. So a normal 356 millimeter armed battleship will pen 59.3 repeating, so 59 millimeters armor, because that's 356 divided by six. But because of the one quarter HE pen rule, you pen 89 millimeters instead. Now, the difference between 59 
and 89 isn't too huge for the most part. However, when you're talking cruisers, that could have a large impact. So let's try to find let's try to find a cruiser with armor belt. Um, let's say within the range. So that's nine, eight, seven, six, and five. Let's try to find a cruiser. Uh, let's look at the Donskoy. I think Hindi had a seventy, didn't it? You might be right. So Donskoy doesn't really matter. Uh, Hindenburg, you said. Uh, German. Too many ships, man. Two. You gotta pick oh, one. yeah. I'll just do the rune. Twenty-seven, one hundred, twenty-seven. No added bonus for the Hindenburg. Oh, did I wait? Was it? It was eighty-nine, That's wasn't rune. it? Rune. Yeah. Rune. Yeah. I know it's rune, but I'm just saying because it's outside the it's outside the matchmaking potential for unless you're going to fail div, right? Oh, for KGV, yeah, yeah. Okay, but now look at this. KGV will HE penetrate the side plating of the Hipper's guns, which means you'll take out the Hipper's guns relatively easily if they're looking at somebody else. The front plate armor, it won't. Top won't, or uh, top plate won't, no. But the top, top part here will, right? Which is why s some ships, for instance, like the Arizona, mm -hmm. it's HE when it hits other ships is just a, it clears the deck it just you can get so many incapacitations with the he i noticed um and so why is it specifically some some you know ships or nations have that's a, di that's that a different mechanic that's a different okay, mechanic. Okay. That's, that's blast radius okay okay yes yeah. i noticed some get extremely easy um you know, where the, when their HE shells hit, they get, you know, quite a few incapacitations, knock out a lot of AA, knock out. It, so I was just curious if it's the armor of the turrets or. So it also depends on how early in the battle you are. The earlier in the battle, the more incapacitations you're going to get because there's more stuff on these enemy ships that you're shooting at that you can blow away. Right. right. So you might be feeling a little placebo there as well. Generally speaking, early in the battle, if you're if you're firing HE, then you're probably going to wreck an awful lot of of, uh, of parts. Now look at Arizona HE, HE pen, guns, especially yes, uh, you know H uh, HE penetration Arizona 59 millimeter. You compare that again to what we were just talking about, you can see the difference there. So um, this is the one sixth rule for American battleships. Okay. Um, like Duckman was saying, there are different, there are additional balancing methods that Wargaming can use if they're not happy with how something is performing. Things like blast radius or for AP shells, things like the fuse timer is another thing that they often like to do. Um, so this game is, of course, extremely complex. Um, I was trying to give mm. you a very basic, you know, high level um, <laughs> understanding. <laughs> And then we go, we go crazy into all these other yeah. mechanics, right? Let's just dissect this. Right. Well, don't forget, yeah. incapacitations are different than destroying AA and secondaries. Incapacitations are engine, rudder, and, mm -hmm. and turrets. Yes. There you go. You know, so while at the beginning of the match, you're stripping AA and secondaries incapacitations are throughout the battle but the more you incapacitate a gun like these turrets do have an hp pool so the yep. more you incapacitate it you are greatly increasing your chance of outright destroying it you will never destroy the engine and rudder unless you destroy the ship right right now this is one of the reasons why conqueror people hate conqueror so mm. much because it penetrates 105 millimeters of armor with HE. So not only does it do a good amount of damage, but it also penetrates everything. Uh, secondaries, um, a, a good number of turrets, especially for destroyers, but also cruiser turrets, uh, torpedo launchers, 
And as so a result, essentially other players would consider that hitting like a Mack truck, basically. Yeah. So a viable strategy in a, in a game with carriers, if you're in a conqueror, let's talk like ranked battles, for example, if you want to be a good team player for your carrier and help your carrier get a really good shot at killing things, then you take your conqueror and you spam AG because what it does is it wipes away um, the anti-air. And as it strips the anti-air, if you think about it, you are buffing your teammate as a result, right? In the carrier. Oh, yeah. Now let's talk about Thunderer. 457 <laughs> millimeter guns, 114 millimeter penetration. Why is 114 important? Because... Let's take a look at Minotaur. You can HE penetrate the Minotaur Citadel. You can do it with the Conqueror, too. And you can do it with the Conqueror as well. Yep. So... No wonder they withdrew the son of a bitch. <laughs> you, you get an idea of how ridiculous some of these ships are. It's one of the reasons why I like to take the Conqueror and just spam it, because I just don't care. Um, other ships that have one quarter... Eight, <laughs> I just don't care. I don't, it's, it's, it's easy, mindless fun for me. Um, other ships that have that uh, one quarter HG pen... German cruisers, like I said. So 203 divided by 4, 51 millimeters of armor. So you will pen. Now here's the fun part. Let's go to the curve first. I said 50 millimeters of armor, right? So you pen the four plating. You pen the deck armor, and the, the turf first, the curve first is huge. So you pen all that deck armor as well. So Hindenburg at long range, you just hold down left mouse button and just lazily move your rudder a bit, and you're fine. And that, that's true for all the smaller battleships as well, uh, the, of, of the German kind. They all have 50 millimeter deck armor at the most. Which is a respectable thickness for a deck. It is. It also works against them for, for carrier planes coming in, because that, that's uh, thick enough armor to arm AP bombs, which is why Hakuryus, and especially the German ba uh, uh, carriers, absolutely love bombing Kurfürst's Turpitzes, Bismarcks, you get the idea. Okay, uh, we're coming up on a bit longer than I had planned to record, which is fine, but I'd love to hear if there's any other questions. If not, I need to cut and do dinner with the wife. <laughs> oh, no. Um, you've answered everything, including even stuff I was kind of uh, having other people wanting me to mention. So I really do appreciate it. And this is exactly what I needed. It makes perfect sense now. Yep. So, you know, and this is tier 10. We always talk about 10, but this applies to any tier. You can go down to tier four and take a look at a Phoenix's armor structure and understand why as a battleship at close range, shooting this guy here isn't going to give you citadels. It's just too narrow. This will though, right? This might. So like, it really depends on a lot of other factors going on at the same time to the point where I personally have never bothered to really care about memorizing the armor profiles of ships. It's just too much information. So I just, mm -hmm. I just keep it as simple as possible. You know, what's the angle that, that I'm looking at there? What can I hit with that angle? You know, that sort of deal. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. That's right. So, and that's part of the reason why some people don't like the HE spamming meta, because it really is simple. I don't have to think much, right? All I need to do is decide who I want to pen, and boom. AP is much more difficult to figure out. you got to do all this crazy math in your head and everything like that if you want to, um, you know, get the best out of your ships. I, I will say this, though. If you're struggling against certain particular ships, if you notice you're struggling against the same ship, go in a training room, throw that ship on the other on enemy team, um, a lot of people don't realize that in a training battle, if you if you have um, all instances of the training battle or whatever up there as, a, as available, uh, battle mode, there's an armor resilience test mode that I believe everybody has access to. And what that basically does is that it puts all of the enemy ships in a line and it allows you to sail around and literally just shoot them from different angles. So... That's something that you can do if you if you really want to invest some time into this and figure out how things work. Um, but the problem with this game is that rarely are you going to ever have a ship that's just going to sit still like this 
the ship's most likely going to move. It's moving forward. It's moving backward. The rudder is shifting. And because the rudder is shifting, the ship itself is tilting a little bit. And that has complete uh, a complete impact on the geometry of these different hitboxes and all that kind of stuff. So again, I just try to keep it simple. I just play the game. In part like two it. of this, we will consider water armor and sap. I hate you, Duckman. <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen um thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoyed the video um stevie is still on my lap so he probably wants some some daddy time um but first admiral thanks for all your support Putin, thanks for being an awesome moderator and helping with king of the sea and all that good stuff and um i think is that everybody in here oh kaduzin is in here and chicken's in here too thanks for jumping in and listening Chicken, as always, jumping in towards the end of my video. <laughs> oh, my timing's impeccable. As always. All right, uh, YouTube, let me know if you liked this. If it's something that you want to see me do more of, I can definitely do that. I can do that on stream as well. Um, and really just want to take a moment and thank you all for your support um, through King of the Sea and your patience. I haven't been able to cover replays and all that good stuff. I really do hope I can get back on track with that uh, soon.tm. So until then, see you all out there. <laughs>